Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Grid Wrap. And on this rather cool evening in London, actually, and a rather hot evening in other places, as far as I can gather. And um, oh God, I've got things flashing all over my screen. I can't see a thing. Right. Thank you very much. So thank you and welcome. And um, yes, I'd like to. Uh, introduce to you Debs Regent from the London Sims or Debs Butler from Virtually Linked. Hello Debs and welcome and thank you very much for coming to talk to us today. Hi do, sir. It's an absolute pleasure. It's lovely to be here with you. Oh. And of course we've got our regular Tessa Harrington from uh, Spot on 3D. How are you doing Tessa? Hi, just doing great. Thank you. So, Debs, we started talking, I was talking to you this morning about networking, not knowing, actually, that you're an expert. And I was asking you to come in and talk about it because I knew you'd been in Second Life for quite some time and that you had been doing the London Sims. And I see your names kind of all over the grid. Oh, really? That's news to me. <laughs> um, yeah, um, well, in Second Life, I, I do London because I find it really, really interesting. Um, but uh, you know, I, I also work as um, an IT analyst where I look at technology and the use of technology and what's happening with it and also I just love social networking mm. um, so you know Second Life is just really a second life for me you know, it's great to meet people and meet them in real life because you know I'm one of these people who I don't know what the word for it um, who likes to have a foot in both worlds. Well, that's brilliant. And um, tell me something, what drew you in in the first place? Oh, that's very easy. Um, <clears throat> my real-life best friend from childhood, from when I was 11 years old, um, mm. you need my voice in one, sorry. My, my real-life friend from seven years old was um, in Second Life and she was running the Sun Microsystems Sims. And yeah. so um, I decided to work with her and um, come into Second Life. So um, so you were dragged in by your friend and then stayed, this sounds like... Um... Well, I was dragged in by my friend and we, because we... Well, it's a long story actually. My, my husband was very ill. Um, we had to come to London for uh, an operation, a, a life-changing operation. Uh, I met my friend. We had tea in Harvey Nicks. Um, so <laughs> we, I got into Second Life. My husband got better. And I thought, well, I want to build Harvey Nicks. Oh, well, brilliant. So, yeah, so I got my experience and built Harvey Nicks. And we were going to run London together. And her real commitments with Sun Microsystems um, prevented her from getting involved with it in the end, and I ended up building London on my own. <laughs> and this is all through tea at Harvey Nichols. And I, I have to explain to people, just in case they don't Nichols. know what Debs is talking about here. In fact, they need to go to the London Sims and find out, I think, really. Oh. Because, <laughs> because basically, Harvey Nichols is a wonderful shop, which is just down the road from Harrods on Knightsbridge in London. I couldn't possibly tell you how I know this. And <laughs> um, you can go upstairs or downstairs, I think, for tea, and maybe in the middle now. I don't know. I haven't been for a while. So, um, but it's amazing what afternoon tea for a Londoner will do. Exactly. It's just the, the epitome of being a Londoner is afternoon tea. And exactly, you know, it's the same as, as New York bagels and, um, you know, it's bagels and the mm. coffee. <laughs> Absolutely lovely. And people come from far and wide to have it, and, and certainly to have it at Harvey Nicks. And one of the other wonder things is of Harvey Nicks's windows, isn't it? Oh, yes. The Harvey Nicks windows are just superb. And the window dressing there is, is, is sublime art. And we are fail to replicate that, I'm afraid, in, inside Second Life. We keep having a go at the... Um, at the at the merchandisers there. And actually, we do merchandising for them. Um, so that people can, you know, have have a good merchandising uh, mm. gosh, what do you call, offering, you know, for their products. And it's wonderful to see when they take it up because it makes a big difference from um, the normal vendors stuck on the wall, which I, I have an objection to. <laughs> 
Okay, so getting back to where we were, I mean, the social networking side, when did that actually creep up on you? And you came in to do the Harvey Nicks. Was it, you know, it was, a, it was an extension, was it? Well, like everything, um, things seem to develop. I mean, when we first came to Second Life, um, Facebook wasn't particularly popular. You know, Facebook was not as, as big a thing as Second Life was at that point mm. in time. And it sort of leapt over Second Life mm. and, um, you know, taken top position, really, in, 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 in being the social uh, networking provider. Mm. Um, I think it lacks a lot of things that virtual worlds have. Um, one is the emotional content. I mean, yeah. you know, virtual worlds are very emotional. You, you get involved with people, you interact with them. It's nice when you can take it into the real world as well. Whereas something like Facebook um, will just basically get you involved in people that you know. And it's more um, arm's length, I would say, than, than this kind of thing. Um, where you actually get to know people, you get to know them quite intimately. Um, you know, in things like Facebook, Twitter, you can share your knowledge mm -hmm. and you know videos with YouTube. You can share things, but the one-to-one -one and the one-to-many interaction it is quite missing. Mm -hmm. And I can, I'm trying to be very careful as to not go on about this and be very boring because I have a background in psychology too, and I can go into all the theory behind it. And I'm, I don't think that's appropriate. <laughs> hmm. But anyway, it's, it's just fun. And it's one thing that's really interesting is that, you know, people, the intensity of the experience, because there's no body language and there's no fear of having the person that in front of you reject you or anything like that, things are so much more intense in something like Second Life. And it's just wonderful. Hmm. Now, um, how important is it to be socially networking active for a business, do you think, for example, or even personally? Well, um, if we, we start with the business, um, a business cannot operate without interacting with other people. You cannot have a business interacting internally mm. without external, you know, for example, a shop. You know, a shop has to have customers walking in through the door. So any form of social interaction. And if you go into a pub where somebody's go um, be rude to you, are you going to go back? Mm. No. So being social, um, you know, being friendly, being having things to say, and, you know, as coming on the show, you know, the sh mm. your show is very interesting. You always have things to say. You always have useful tips. And, you know, so it's well worth, taking part mm. um, for an individual I mean we all have to have you know, have friends we have family we have you know, without other people I mean mm. it just doesn't exist you know life doesn't you know, there is there is a saying that says um, you know we are only reflected in our lives as a mirror to other people mm. so you know without other people we're nothing so we we basically don't get seen, do we? And we don't get a sense of ourselves. How do you stand on this, Tessa? Just had a, um, a meeting about this with, um, I've got a new, um, uh, a new uh, blogger. Finally, I found a blogger and um, she's just sensational. She knows mm. how to say what I say that takes two hours to say in like five lines. I don't mm. know how she does, <laughs> but much better than me. And I think that to me, is the secret that I have yet to learn. You got to keep it short and sweet. Um, you got to keep it. You you got it's repeating. You know. And she was kind of she was kind of like she didn't understand. She's not even though she blogs really well. She didn't understand about why do we have to why do we have to do this to twenty different sites? <laughs> but it is a mass of a critical mass as far as social networking uh, from a point of view of like bringing in the people we have to audiences like this. Mm. You've got to put notice out so far and get a buzz going. And then you can get on that more intimate level. I think where you know, like I am right here, I'm, I'm having a conversation with several people while we're having this, 
you know, and I think that's one of the extraordinary things about uh, social networking and virtual worlds. There's all these layers of conversation that go on in presentations and even when you're talking to somebody in a private conversation. Mm. Yes, one thing about the cloud, that one thing great about something like this is you can have an event like this and you've got the public face of it, which is what we're doing, mm. and yet you've got all the back chat, you've got all the back channels <laughs> like this. <laughs> yes, yes. So what I you can do. <laughs> and, and they could be on a whole other vein, you know. Yeah. They could be going down a whole different path, and um, you know, it's it's pretty extraordinary. Or it can be adding into it. Absolutely. So it, that's what you I love about it. It's so yeah. three dimensional, even in mm-hmm. in your communications. You know, it's not just about the eye candy. So, what is it? What does it take to reach critical mass? You talked about critical mass, Tessa, and 